Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School lesson for Sunday, July 31st, 2022. Hi, I am Reverend Mary Tillman, an Associate Minister at Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, and I will be the presenter of today's lesson. We're still in the summer quarter, and our study is Partners in a New Creation. We're in Unit 2, and the theme of Unit 2 is The Word, the Agent of Creation. This is lesson number five, the last lesson in unit two. The lesson title in the Townsend Press Sunday School Commentary is The Word Gives Peace. The title in the Faith Pathway Bible Studies for Adults is Present Forever. Devotional reading is Psalm 119 verses 161 through 168. And our background scripture, John chapter 14, verses 15 through 31. And our printed passage, John 14, verses 15 through 29. Our key verse is John 14, 16. From the NIV Bible, it reads, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to study your holy word. Please open our minds so that we may learn and understand the meaning of the message that Jesus gave, assuring us of the forever presence of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in all situations and circumstances in our lives. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As we look at the introduction to this lesson, As I stated, this is the last lesson in Unit 2 entitled, The Word, the Agent of Creation. The lessons in this quarter were taken from the book of John. The lessons stressed how the creating word became flesh, healed the sick, saved the lost, resurrected the dead, and granted through the Holy Spirit peace. So get your Sunday school book, your Bible, your pen and notepad, and follow along as we go forward with this powerful lesson. Let's get started. As I stated, the title of this lesson is Present Forever, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit. There are three questions for you to consider. Question number one, what did Jesus promise his disciples? Question number two, what did Jesus promise to those who love him and obey him? Question number three, what did Jesus promise the disciples that the Holy Spirit would help them remember? Let's look at the lesson's biblical context. This week's lesson continues in the book of St. John. The Apostle John, who is one of the original 12 disciples and the author of the Gospel of John. As a disciple of Jesus, the Apostle John was a direct eyewitness to the ministry of Jesus. His eyewitness testimony is presented and affirmed throughout his Gospel. This week's lesson is in John chapter 14, one of my favorite chapters. In those last moments before his death on Calvary, Jesus devoted his attention to his disciples, the ones who had received him. In John's Gospel, chapters 13 through 17 is recorded Jesus' farewell address to his disciples. The entire passage constitutes Jesus' farewell discourse in which he prepared his disciples for life without his physical presence. Jesus addressed the remaining 11 disciples after dismissing Judas, his betrayer. The text in this lesson is part of an extended farewell discourse in which Jesus gives the disciples final teachings, especially teachings concerning the Holy Spirit. Jesus comforted his disciples and prepared them for his departure. The setting for this lesson is in the upper room. The passage is sometimes called the Upper Room Discourse. It begins in the Upper Room and continues as Jesus and the disciples walk 
to Gethsemane. It occurred between the conclusion of the Last Supper and arriving at Gethsemane. Jesus desired that his disciples would understand and continue his mission in the world. In the remaining hours and before his death and departure, Jesus was sensitive to the disciples' need to know they would not be abandoned. Jesus promised that the Father would send another helper to be with them forever. This week's aims are explore the relationship between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. To feel encouraged that Jesus offers us peace in the Holy Spirit. And to commit to obeying Christ rather than the Prince of Darkness. There are three lesson outlines in the Adult Pathways Sunday School book. I will share two key points from each of these outlines and expound some on each of them. The first outline is the prerequisites of the promise, and we'll find that in John 14, verses 15 through 21. The second outline is the privilege of promise, John 14, verses 22 through 24. And the third outline is the assurance of the promise. And we'll see that in John ver- chapter 14, verses 25 through 29. Outline number one, the prerequisites of the promise. Verses 15 through 21 from the 14th chapter of John reads thusly, starting with verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Let's begin our analysis of the biblical text with the first lesson outline, the prerequisites of the promise. Key point number one, God wants us to love him and obey him as we read in verse 15. Love for Jesus is expressed by keeping his commands. That is, by responding to all he taught with faith and obedience. Jesus emphasized obedience to his commands as proof of our love for him. And when we love him and keep his commands, he says in verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Verse 17 We note, he says, the world cannot accept the spirit of truth because it doesn't see or know him, but he will live with and be in those who know him. Jesus said the coming advocate would be called the spirit of truth, who would be the most reliable means of divine revelation. Since God is a person, it follows that his most compelling revelation must be a person. Although Jesus would soon leave the disciples to return to the Father, the Spirit of Truth would be with them forever. The Spirit of Truth is Christ's continuing presence working in and through the church until God's redemptive work is complete. Key point number two. Jesus promises never to leave us alone. Verse 18, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Jesus promises to come to the disciples again in the person of the coming advocate, the Holy Spirit. The helper 
the Spirit of God himself would come after Jesus' departure to be with the Father. The Holy Spirit's presence empowers people to pursue goodness, righteousness, peace, and justice in the Lord's name. The Holy Spirit will be with us forever, as we read in verse 16. He dwells with us. He lives in us. The Holy Spirit reminds us of Jesus' words. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. The Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is our counselor, our comforter, our advocate, our intercessor, and our peace. He empowers and he equips us. In verse 19, Jesus promised the disciples they would see him in resurrected form, but the world, the non-believers, would not see him anymore. He said, because I live, you shall live also. This promise is only for believers, for those who love him. Followers of Jesus show their love for him by obeying him, keeping his commandments. When we live by God's standards, he will not leave us. He will come to us. He will be in us, and he will show himself to us. Partial and inconsistent obedience grieves the Holy Spirit, hinders and weakens the ministry, and leads to unproductive spiritual lives it also forfeits blessings, and it reveals the genuineness of a believer's love for Christ. Outline number two, the privilege of the promise. And we find that in John 14, verses 22 through 24. And these scriptures are from the New, Liv New International Version translation. Verse 22, Then Judas not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, they belong to the Father who sent me. Here Jesus is making it clear who spoke, who said these words, and he's just speaking them verbally to his remaining disciples. Key point number one, Jesus announced that he would only reveal himself to those who love him and obey his commands. In answer to the question in verse 22, Jesus emphasized that only those who love and obey him Enjoy this privilege of receiving the love of the Father and the Son. Verse 23, in addition, and I love this especially. In addition, those loving and obeying his teachings are privileged to have the Father and the Son make their home in them through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's powerful. This is an individualized promise to anyone who chooses to love and obey. Thank you, Lord. Key point number two. The real tragedy is that those who refuse to prove their love through obedience are rejecting the Father who sent Jesus into the world. Believers must recognize that disobedience to any of God's commandments amounts to rejecting him while the presence of the Holy Spirit in us assures God's presence, power, and counsel, disobedience blocks his ministry. Disobedience among believers also tarnishes their witness to the world and says to God the Father and the Son, quote, I don't genuinely love you, end quote. The solution to disobedience is intentional and continuous spiritual transformation. We must, on a daily basis, be committed to spiritual maturity by meditating, praying, reading, and studying God's Word, and obeying the teachings of Christ the Son. 
The Holy Spirit's eternal presence in our lives is cause for thanksgiving and for praise. Outline number three, the assurance of the promise. And we find that in verses 25 through 29. And it reads thusly from the NIV translation. All this I have spoken while still with you. This is Jesus talking. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Oh, don't you just love the way Jesus broke that down? Key point number one, the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. We see that in verse 26. Yes, the Holy Spirit would remind the disciples of the teachings of Jesus while he was physically with them. The Holy Spirit helps us in the same way. The Holy Spirit can only bring to our remembrance the things we have read and studied. That is why it is so important for us to consistently read and study God's Word. Jesus' promises are sure because he can fulfill all of them. Key point number two. Jesus promises peace to all believers. In verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We read in the first verse of this chapter where Jesus told his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus does not want us to be troubled or afraid, but he wants us to be at peace, to rest in the blessed assurance that he is the good shepherd, he is the son of God, and he will never leave or forsake us. We need to absorb that, saints, remembering that blessed assurance that Jesus, he is the good shepherd, he is the son of God, and he will never leave us, neither will he forsake us. He continued to console his disciples with the promise that he would come back to them in verse 28. He would return to them not only at the second coming, but also during the present time through the Holy Spirit. While it may have been very hard for them to grasp, the disciples should have rejoiced that Jesus was going to the Father. Jesus had prophesied these things ahead of times so that when they happened, the disciples would believe in him and also believe that he was present with the Father and had revealed him. See verse 29. Jesus' departure was best for Jesus, best for the disciples, and best for the world. There are specific principles that we can apply to our lives from these promises that Jesus made to his disciples. First, as believers, we must remain teachable and open to the Holy Spirit's teaching ministry in order to understand and internalize God's Word. Being teachable requires being intentional includes study and exposure to the Word and consistent obedience to the Word of God. Second, acknowledging the importance of an intimate and obedient relationship with Christ. Thirdly, it is significant that believers don't become so self-absorbed with challenges and difficulties. God has given the gift of peace and assurance that he is working on our behalf. He is working on behalf of those who love him. The gift of the Holy Spirit, once given, is never taken away. Our outline in summary. 
Jesus encouraged his disciples by promising that the Father would send a helper like him after his departure. Jesus left the world to return to the Father who sent him, but God sent the Comforter to dwell in every believer who places their faith in Jesus Christ, those who love him, those who obey him. Every believer receives the gift of the Holy Spirit by placing their faith in Jesus Christ. This lesson challenges us to make consistent obedience a priority in our lives. Jesus wants us to love him and obey his teachings and commands. Accepting and obeying Jesus is necessary to receive the Holy Spirit's ministry's benefit, such as guidance, strength, encouragement, and peace. The work of the Holy Spirit enables the disciples to recall and record the truth spoken by Jesus in the Gospels throughout the New Testament. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand and recall God's word and his teachings. The Holy Spirit guides us, empowers us, and equips us. Without the Holy Spirit's ministry, the task of effectively continuing Jesus' mission in the world is impossible. There are many in our world today who have yet to accept Jesus and many others who, like the people of ancient Israel, continue to, outright, to just outright reject him. Christ's mission is now the mission of believers in every age. And that is to tell men, women, boys, and girls that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I hope this lesson has given you an insight on the blessing of having the Holy Spirit dwell within us, to have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit at home in our spirits. We thank God for the gift of the Advocate, our Advocate, the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson, and we thank you, Jesus, for the peace you have given to those who love and obey you. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, our Advocate, to lead, guide, and bring to our remembrance the things you taught and promised to every true believer. We love you, we praise you, we honor you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful day. Until next time, be blessed.